Hey everyone, today I have an urban logging pickup kind of thing. I'm grabbing these two pieces of white oak out of a side yard. I'm going to start with the bigger ones since those ones tend to be easier. I'll get a chain on it and see what it wants to do. And since it's wanting to just roll and slide to the side, I'll hook the chain to the underside of the log, which should cause it to go in the direction that I want. Now that it's nicely lined up, it can be skidded closer to the trailer. And for a bit of backstory on these logs, a couple of viewers who are neighbors reached out to me about these logs. They got into chainsaw milling and have been slicing up logs from this tree, which is in their neighbor's yard. The remaining pieces are a bit big for their mill, and their neighbor is ready for these logs to be out of their yard. <laughs> Luckily for Adam and Pete, they know a guy who can pull these things out of a yard. <laughs> The big one is pretty close to the trailer now, so I can prep it to go on. The biggest thing here is not clobbering that fence. I haven't damaged any fences in my years of doing this, and I'd kind of like to keep it that way. I'll shift the connection point on the arch from the middle to the side to keep the log as far away from the fence as possible. Now it's positioned nicely, and I can do the first lift. And this is something that I see frequently done incorrectly by those using these trailer arches for the first time. I'll see them chain the log too short, lifting the log way up into the air and having it slam down onto the trailer. This first lift should be much more graceful. <laughs> the log should be chained a few feet from its end with a chain length that is right around the height of the arch. I chained this one a bit long, which wasn't a big deal since the angled back of the trailer helps to ease the log onto the deck. And that's about it for the first lift. The end of the log is sitting nicely on the back of the trailer, and I can move on to rigging for the second lift, which will scoot the log further onto the deck. I missed it. You missed I it, think. yeah. Yeah, you're From you this angle, it. I did at least. Yeah, you cleared it. <laughs> now, real quick, I want to point out something that I've shown in the past that I'm using quite a lot on this pickup. This is a chain shortener. It's just two grab hooks linked together, but it's super handy to take up the slack in a chain. You can make one yourself with a pair of hooks and a few links of chain, or buy a pre-made one like this for about $12. So a quick reposition of a chain and we can go for a second scooting lift. Now the log is sitting on the deck, kind of cantilevered off the back and it can be pulled the rest of the way onto the trailer. I'll use my log tongs to drag it the rest of the way since this log isn't super big. Okay, on to the smaller log. These little logs have historically caused me way more grief than any big log, especially goofy logs like this one with very non-uniform weight distributions. Regardless though, the first thing on the list is to get the log closer to the trailer. In my experience, these logs load easiest if I can get the lower crotch vertical. I'll wrap the chain around the log so it grabs and roll the log into the position that I want. I'll give a lift a try with the chain and that wasn't super successful, so I'll switch to using the tongs which will grab the log and keep it from rolling. I'll also move the bigger one over a bit to make some more room and then we'll just brute force this baby log onto the trailer.
Now just chain everything down and it's time to roll out. All right, pretty, I don't know, fun and uneventful pickup. Been a little while since I've done one. So a little bit of uh, measurements on these white oak logs. This one, the main one, 30 inches in diameter down here at the butt. And then total length on this is just a hair over eight feet. We're splaying at the crotch here to 44 inches. This shorter one is uh, about seven feet long, 16 inches up there in the middle. And on this end, at least, it splays to about 28 inches. So kind of a fun little crotch area. We got a second crotch down here, lower in the log. So I'm gonna get these things unchained and then get these things offloaded because, well, probably gonna need the trailer again. Since one load's not enough, how about another one? <laughs> Here is uh, what I just got back with today. We have a cherry log about 18 inches in diameter, about nine feet long. Next to it there is a red oak that is 13 feet long. Uh, the butt end down here is about 34 or so. It's a pretty healthy sized log. And then up in the bed of the truck, we have a white oak crotch that is about four feet wide. My buddy Brent from Meridian Tree saves these big or crotchy logs for me. Everything they haul away from removals is ground up into mulch, which ends up being burned to heat buildings. A decent use for the material, but you do lose the beauty inside the wood. Now, I always love going to visit Brent because I absolutely love watching people who can operate machines with crazy precision just do their work. These hydraulic devices just become an extension of their body.
So the log pile over here is growing pretty rapidly, so probably getting time to run the saw and start uh, slicing these bad boys up. So a big thank you to Adam and Pete for having me out, and it sounds like they'll be coming out here for cutting up uh, their logs, which are somewhere in this pile now, down there. <laughs> we'll get those cut up together, and that should be uh, a whole heck of a lot of fun. Also, big thank you to Brent. This was actually the second load that I picked up from him. The first load I did show on my trailer at the start of my shop move, uh, the machines move video. Those two logs on my trailer then were from him and they are in this pile here. I'm sitting on one of them now and there is a hard maple log behind me. So a big thank you to Brent for the, uh, the awesome logs. <laughs> Every time I go there, there's just like piles and piles of stuff just waiting to get chipped. It's, uh, it's crazy how much this material just gets chipped up because there's no, uh, no use like this for them. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing two different sides of the, I guess the urban logging thing. You have like literally going out to people's yards and then you have going and getting logs from a tree service or an arborist that has already removed those logs from, or those trees, turn them into logs uh, and are able to do something with them from that point. So that is going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on urban logging or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.